Hello again, this is Jack Snow one and this is the part one of my PC build series and at last, if you noticed in my introduction video I was saying about the fact my case hadn't arrived due to it being New Year at last it has arrived and it is the X-Case V12 which is quite, I have to admit, quite a cheap case but it was only 12 99 and I really needed one short notice so I chose this one and I'm quite pleased with it. It is you'll notice it's quite cheap, the metal's of quite poor quality and it's quite flimsy, but it'll do for my build. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to prepare the case for putting all the components in and I believe I'll also be installing the power supply. So first thing we'll do is spin the case around and remove the four, four little thumb screws which hold on the two sides like so sorry if my head just got in the way then and we'll take the first side panel off and the second side panel off and that leaves us with the case side open. Let's get a slightly better view on that. So here's the side of the case. At the back we've already got one fan fitted already so we don't have to worry about that for the minute. And here we've got all of the front panel connectors and most importantly the screws and standoffs for the motherboard which we will be needing. So if I pause the camera for a minute while I get some scissors Right, I'm back and I've got some scissors, so we'll cut the small cable tie which came, which held on the bits and pieces. So if we look at these, we've got, if I zoom in for you for a minute, sorry about the quality of the camera, I'm only using an old small camera. We've got the two USB cables coming from the front with the USB connector on them. We've also got the front panel audio and as most cases do now we've got the choice of either HD audio or the more old fashioned AC97 audio and the other pit connectors from the front we've got all the other front panel connectors so uh, hard drive, LED, power LED, reset switch and the power switch which we can connect to our motherboard later so we'll put those out the way so they don't interfere with the case and also in the case we've got what appears to be another uh, panel for the front um, so you can put in your hard drive uh, when you put in your uh, drives in the front this is just a cover that you can use we've also got all the standoffs and screws for the motherboard and the power supply etc and the motherboard speaker if it doesn't already have one so the first thing I'm going to do is to take out the motherboard standoffs and although it's not actually marked in this case because I said it's quite a cheap case I, I know where the motherboard standoffs has got to go and it already has six of them in the board so I'll find the other, two, other three required for an ATX motherboard which is the one I'm going to be using. So there's one, um, there's two, and there is three. So I managed to tip those all out all over the place, but that's okay. Right, so if we look here, there is one screw hot there's one standoff I'm going to put there. I'm going to put the other one there and the final one you can't quite see there, but that's where it's going to go. So I'll do that now. So the right, we'll just check the other ones are tight, although I'm sure they are, as that's how it came. The case. And those are tight. Right, so now we have the motherboard standoffs in to stop the motherboard from short circuiting. Very, very important you remember that. 
because otherwise you could have quite a nasty surprise when you go to put your motherboard in and it blows up straight away which is not something which we want to happen. So the next thing we're going to put in is the power supply which came also from X-Case with this case. It's a 620 watt power supply from X-Case, I'm not actually sure of the manufacturer. It looks like it's a company called Ace Power Supplies which sound quite good. This is once again a very cheap and incredibly simple power supply. So not much, I think it was something like £19.99. Uh, it actually doesn't have a mains power lead, but luckily I've got one. So here is a power supply, very simple power supply with SATA connections. That's the one main thing I had to make sure I had. So if I get the scissors and just take the coating up here. And another thing which you'll see me doing in these videos is I'm going to be using a anti-static wrist strap which looks like this and the reason I'm going to be using that is just to be on the safe side I don't want to be frying any of my components as, they, as most of them are very sensitive to static electricity although the power supply luckily isn't one of them so I've taken the plastic rubbish packaging off it and now we have the power supply now, I'm not sure if any of you eagle-eyed viewers have noticed, but it doesn't look like there's anywhere to put the power supply in this case. And that's because it's an incredibly strange and compact design of case. Now, what in most computer cases and builds, the power supply will either go at the bottom here in most gaming, gaming cases, or most common at the top and will fix to the back panel. However, in this case, to save space, what they have quite cleverly, I think, done is actually mounted the power supply just here. I'm not sure if I can get a very good view of it, but the power supply mounts uh, uh, vertically here, and this power lead comes out the bottom of the case and plugs into the power supply, and then it leads out to the back of the case. So I'm now going to install the power supply and if you notice on the back of power, computer power supplies or PSUs they have one screw offset like this. So you've got one, two, three and that one is offset. Now if you look on the case as well, if I try and get you a much better angle on this then you will see that there's also a hole, there's also an offset screw on the case. So, we look at that and we know which way out to put the power supply. So, if I move around to here, I can see, unfortunately you may not be able to see this, but I can see the offset screw in this case is here. So I find the offset screw and make sure this lead is tucked out from underneath and tuck the power supply in to the case which being a very, very compact case is not as easy as it is on a ordinary case and I'm quite debating whether I should in fact turn the case upside down so you can see this better I've now turned the case upside down so you can see better so unfortunately I have to take the power supply out so before I put the power supply in I'm going to locate the screws I need to put in the power supply so if I look at the big handful of screws I've got here don't count me on this but I believe the screws you want are ones which have a 30 coarse thread like this I really don't think you can see that very well. So we'll pick out one, two, three, four. No, that's not one. One, two, three, four of those and get those ready to hand. We also need a screwdriver ready. And we'll offer the power supply up into the case.
Right. I could really, really do with two people to help me here. I believe one cable may have got stuck. Right. But that's okay. So, we get the power supply up in here. We put our screws in, which is very, very hard when I have to hold the power supply up in the up into the case. But don't worry, I'll do my best. It's also very, very useful to use a magnetic screwdriver when putting a computer together, as as far as I'm aware, it doesn't harm any of the components in your computer, and it is very, very helpful for trying to hold screws in place when particularly when you're screwing in the motherboard and you don't want to get any screws stuck behind it which could cause it to short circuit right so, unlike me, I'm sure you'll be plenty more skilled and you'll be able to get these four screws in place to securely hold the power supply in to the system. And I'm pretty sure, unless you'd like to use the same parts which I'm using, including the case, that your power supply will not be mounted like this, but the screws and the way of fixing will still be the same. So make sure these are nice and tight, but don't over tighten them. It's very important in a computer. Many components can be damaged by over tightening. So we'll do that. So they're all tight, and this is something which I have to do. And if you decide to buy this case, you also have to do is connect this little extender which goes out to the back of the case into there like that and that is the power supply fitted and also switch the switch off while you're plugging in all the rest of the components and so that is the end of part one of my PC build um, I hopefully I'll be getting part two up pretty soon although I've got in very late tonight so it won't be tonight um, you also notice that I haven't added any of those fans which I talked about in the introduction and that's because I still need to look at where I'm going to put them and hopefully I'll show you in the next video. So thank you very much for watching and good luck.